we used in the last one. Oh, we're live straight away. No countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm here with Dama. I'm Orna Ross of the Alliance of Independent Authors. I'm here with the wonderful Dama from Publish Drive. Hi, Dama. Hi, Orna, and hi, everybody. It's really great to be back. It's great. We had a bit of downtime for various reasons. We missed last month out, and uh, we are back. We are back. And of course, what you're watching is the um, poetry, the self-publishing poetry salon from the Alliance of Independent Authors, one of four streams that we do um, in our self-publishing salons. Um, the other others are, just for those of you who are not regulars, Fiction and Nonfiction is one show, and we also do our member Q&A each month, and then we do an advanced salon for those who are kind of well up and established and who want to know more about running a successful author business with the wonderful Joanna Penn. So, but tonight it's poetry and this is this show is for everybody. And I think tonight we're focusing uh, in on people who might be very experienced poets, but perhaps not very experienced poetry publishers, which is a, a slightly different thing. And um, so on the show, our, our theme is very much um, about putting together our own books. But there are many ways then to feature those books. So there's the whole production thing, but then there's the marketing and promotion thing. And how you feature poetry, we're going to look tonight at kind of the old way in the traditional publishing system and in the new way um, in the this great explosion of digital poetry that we're all enjoying. So um, let us know where you're beaming in from. We have James Hill has been recommended by Karen Inglis. Always take a recommendation from Karen Inglis, I say. Hi, James, you're welcome. And hi, Diana, great to have you in from Vancouver. So Dama, yeah, talk to us a little bit. Um, you know, the traditional way for the poet was small magazines, try and get a collection published. Um, you know, enter competitions, and we'll talk about each of each of these things. But how have things changed? Well, as self-publishing made everything a little bit more democratic. Uh, so, as you know, magazines uh, editors are stricter, maybe a little bit more not open to new voices, a little bit set in their ways. And uh, new voices emerge with the um, uh, with the the coming of social media. So there are particular social media platforms uh, like Instagram or Tumblr or particular ones that are built especially for poetry uh, that are incredibly useful. And basically, those were the ones that brought in this uh, renaissance of um, poetry lovers and, and poetry writing in, in the 21st century. So basically, in the past five to 10 years, that what we experienced. So that's basically what changed. Um, and basically, we are going to talk about the different ways how you can feature um, your poems and what are the tips and tricks, basically, uh, what you can help your poems to be uh, getting attention as they deserve. Yeah, exactly. So we are assuming that everybody here wants to put together chapbooks and poetry books. And then there is the question of how you feature those books and also how you feature individual poems. So um, the literary magazines, let's kind of start there. I mean, this they do an incredible job. Um, Labours of Love, generally speaking, certainly not done for the commercial return because a lot of them are still very embedded in a print model, though there are some digital only magazines now. Um, for me, the the wonderful thing about about those magazines is that poetry lovers are running them and each of them has its own distinct kind of character. They're almost like a poem in themselves, each and each issue of them. And some of the better ones are really quite extraordinarily good. But 
you've always got this problem that there are only so many slots and you've got one person's taste to, you know, who is kind of reading the poetry and then putting it out there. Do you have any thoughts or experience around literary magazines? Um, uh, I actually, I subscribe to one, um, which is not necessarily, uh, um, Poets and Writers is part, it's, it's part um, for the, the trade, for the publishing trade and par for poetry lovers or uh, writers who are trying to establish themselves. And that uh, if anyone is a script um, subscriber, then you can easily get it. So that's that's how I, I usually read it. So um, I, I really love that one particularly. Do, do you have um, magazines that you really like? Yeah, I, I was a subscriber to Poets and Writers uh, some time ago, some years ago, um, but not, mm. not in recent years, just no particular reason, not that it, it, the quality is incredible. It's a really super interesting magazine. Um, London, uh, Poetry London is a, a magazine that I particularly like. Mm -hmm. I love the journal, um, po the Poetry Ireland journal also. Mm -hmm. And I love sort of academic explorations mm -hmm. of poetry and, um, <clears throat> you know, pulling them apart, what most people don't like, um, pulling, pulling them apart and putting them back together again. So there, there are a number of Irish mm. um, kind of obscure uh, mm -hmm. literary journals that you can only get at with an academic subscription. I mean, you wouldn't be paying for them, let me put it that way. Um, so I'm not going to even include them in the <laughs> show list because, or in the show notes because they're just, first of all, they're very minority interest and also yeah. um, for that reason. But a lot of the magazines now, of course, are online and that has allowed um, a number of them to kind of expand out there. I also love um, Tiny URL. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that one. It is run by an individual originally. I forget his name just doesn't come to mind in this moment, but it's Haiku and he mm -hmm. is curated, um, but it's digital now. And mm -hmm. um, he just each month puts together, people just send him their, their Haiku and each month he selects the ones that he feels he'd like to include in his listing or whatever. So um, I think it's good to see the magazines coming online. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing we're seeing as they move online is a Patreon model. Mm -hmm. So there's very interesting uh, poets writing the news, um, which is um, a group of poets who respond to contemporary um, events. Now that can be dangerous for a poet or it can be super inspiring and obviously these are people who are inspired by the news and um, it's a really interesting um, project I suppose you'd call it um, which I support on Patreon which I really really enjoy and then of course there are the, the classic um, you know the the kind of the, the big ones that everybody thinks of and also the um, review sections in the the newspapers and magazines, which have shrunk, it has to be said, mm -hmm. poetry's part as poetry has grown and expanded in the digital world and taken off. We've got this kind of divide that has come in and um, there's almost two separate understandings of what poetry is and what it does and how you feature it, which will pull apart a little bit more as we go through the show so sorry I'm just trying to get rid of this here so yeah um so that's the literary magazines the next thing is competitions do you, do you recommend that people should enter competitions I definitely do so um particularly because you have a deadline set and I think that also for me, it's encouraging that you already have a deadline. Um, you have a price. You have some set of rules. Usually, you know, um, there is a, a theme that you should follow. So you have some um, some qualities that you have to meet. So that's, I think, a good starting point if you are just starting off. And even if you are not starting off, but an established poet. I think it can get your name out there and uh, uh, you can get featured 
in a literary magazine, or you can get a prize uh, where you can start off publishing your poetry. So basically, it helps you produce uh, your own uh, your own volume of poetry a, a lot easier. So I think definitely that's that's a the good start, or you know, basically so, something that really helps you along the way. Did you enter? Oh, competitions me. competitions i'm forever saying oh, i must enter that <laughs> and sticking it up on the notes board and drawing a big nice red circle around the entry date and then watching it whiz past me <laughs> <laughs> no i have to say competitions have never really worked mm. for me i mm -hmm. you know i completely see that they're great and some of them now are quite lucrative i mean you know the days when you sort of won a fiver and um, publication in a tatty little magazine that was held together with a staple that's gone you you do have poetry prizes now for, you know that are in four and even five figures which is marvelous but for me it didn't it didn't ever serve as a kind of stimulus and even in terms of when i you know when i was thinking of entering i was very often thinking of entering some a poem that i had written before that i liked oh i must enter that one kind of thing what has definitely worked better for me is the new way uh, in terms of, of stimulating um, production. So I have definitely written far more poems since I've gone on to Instagram than I ever did before. And at the moment, I'm challenging myself to write almost one a day. Um, well, I'm challenging myself to do one a day and I am succeeding in producing almost one a day. And some of them are very short and very small. Some of them are longer. They're inspired by a picture that I've either taken myself or um, by some picture that I've been kind of taken with that I've seen on the internet and asked the artist, can I kind of take it and riff off it and do a poem uh, for a credit kind of thing? And everyone always says yes, and um, it's very nice. Uh, so <laughs> for me, definitely digital has has done it. And I'm it, I've embarked on this incredibly interesting journey uh, for me which I feel I'm only I've only got my toe in the water in terms of how it works so you know when when I started looking at poems online and these these are put up freely they're you know they're not expected nobody's expected to pay you can and I do um, mention occasionally my Patreon page but it's very much about put, putting them out there and when I looked at it first about two or three years ago I have to confess I was rather snobby about it and <laughs> I was thinking about poetry very much from the traditional kind of thought the way I have been raised to think about poems and this is not how social media operates in the poetry world so you know what is being put out there very often is a teaser and a taster and then in the caption you get a full poem and sometimes what's put out there on the actual visual image or the word art can seem a little obvious or a little kind of the or kind of you know good you know good motivation quote on know? the nose on the yeah. nose exactly our our film friends term exactly yeah. on the nose but then sometimes when you get into the work itself it's it's not so much so now it is but what I also came to realize it is that there is this huge outpouring of on the nose work that is really needed and and absorbed by people who want the words like that. They don't want to be kind of looking for the the obscure meaning of or the obscure message, the abstract. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Exactly. And teasing out what, what does the poet mean, you know, or, or stripping it apart in that way that I love to do and look at the actual, I think, mm -hmm. poem often like a jigsaw, take it apart, put it back together again. You know, um, that's not what they want. What they want is as they scroll through their feed, they want words that are meaningful to them. And it has broadened my definition of what poetry is. Um, you know, so if it is meaningful to somebody, are we as poets really going to go in and take that away? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't I don't think so. And then, of course, on Instagram and on all the social media, there is poetry for every single taste, including my crazy take it all apart taste. So, you know, everybody can find, but it takes time. And that's what I'm realizing. It definitely takes time. It's not something you can just 
jump into. And I think other aspects of publishing um, and writing, if you're writing nonfiction, you're writing novels, it's much easier to find what we call your comps, your comparable Mm -hmm. authors. We talk about poetry as if it's one thing. We, you know, we wouldn't talk about fiction the way we talk that way and assume, you know, are you a poetry lover even? You know, it's not, we wouldn't say, are you a nonfiction lover? We'd we'd say, what kind of nonfiction books do you, you know, do you read? You instantly think about genre when you think about the other two macro Mm. genre of fiction and nonfiction. But when it comes to poetry, for some reason, we lump it all together. And I think, uh, yeah, my own personal kind of explorations so far have shown me very much that you can't lump it all together. I completely agree with you. And I never thought of it that way. Uh, But I have particular taste in poetry as well. I mean, I I learned about poetry and uh, I encountered a lot of different types uh, and I also agree what you said before that I think for a lot of people uh, kind of 20th century poetry postmodernism with T.S. Eliot where you have to understand every single word in a different sense and somehow you just get lost and um, right now um, Insta poetry is a lot more accessible to a lot more people um, than than postmodern poetry that you learn in school. Um, and uh, and yes, when I first read it uh, or read Rupi Kaur, I was a little surprised as well. Uh, that was not what I was brought up with uh, as poetry. But I think that was one of the first uh, volumes that I read, uh, Milk and Honey, that I, I really cried at the end. So it's it's emotionally extremely accessible um but yes uh i think it's very very hard to find who are the authors that you cling with uh so basically you you understand you you have the same understanding of what poetry is or what are the main topics for you what you want to explore are you empowering are you um, more spiritual are you more about the reality that you you are in or just basically uh, talking about your own life in in uh, in a lyrical way so basically what what is your vision that you want to to put out there or how you what kind of um, tools you are using are you using imagery are you using photos are you using drawings um so yeah there are a lot of different things that you need to 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 decide but first i think you should know the surroundings or you should know the social media environment that you go into so um I would say that first, before you start publishing, you should really go in and see for yourself what's out there. Yeah, I I definitely think so. And also to take it as a given that if you are going to go this route of putting your work out there, um, that it's what, what you start doing is going to modify and change as you go along. So I think you need a sense of who you are as a poet. Um, and that includes the kinds of things we've been talking about at the technical level. But also, of course, it includes, as Donna was saying so rightly there, the motivation behind your work. Why is it, you know, why are you writing poetry? What, what are you getting from the writing of it is very likely more than any other form to be very connected to what your reader is getting from it um, as they read. And so the thing I think about this way of featuring your poems as well, uh, compared to say competitions or submission for magazines is that you are, you know, when you submit to competitions of magazines, you're kind of throwing it out there and you're waiting to hear what somebody or organization thinks. And they will either think that, 
you know, one or two or three or maybe 10 prize winners get through and then everybody else kind of doesn't. And there are competitions that will feed back to every single entrant, but not very many of them. So in a sense, you're kind of working in the dark, whereas on digital um, publishing on Tumblr or Instagram or Twitter, also people are doing really well there, Facebook, whatever, wherever your environment is, you're working in the light. You're letting people see a lot of your stuff. And it's that's very different. Uh, it's a very different experience. For me, certainly, I can say it has been more of a learning experience. I've learned more, grown more as a poet in the last year than I did in the nine or 10 years I've been writing poetry before that. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of very much, but it's not going to surprise anybody, that I'm very much on the self-publishing, put it out there, you know, keep it moving, keep producing kind of way of doing things. But really important to say there is no right way um there is just your way and actually probably the best way is if you have the time and space is to do both um to to actually use the digital media to keep you working and producing and putting stuff out there also seeing the responses you're getting that's been a big part of my learning and um, i've switched up my Instagram again for the fourth time, I think, in terms of how I'm putting the material out there. And I feel now I really have it. But then I felt that the last three times as well. <laughs> so we'll see. But um, you get a sense, you get responses, you get people who say, you get people, they will actually, the readers will actually say what it was they liked. And sometimes that's, oh, wow, I didn't even know I'd done that. Or they've, you know, you've given them what you thought you, you were giving or, or whatever, or you see that something you thought was completely quite okay, maybe even good, and uh, yeah, so, uh, no response at all. <laughs> and something that you thought, oh God, you feel really cringy about and don't really want to put out there, actually goes down really well and people respond really well to it. So one of the things I've learned, it's emphasized for me, something that I do know, but we, we need to be told over and over again, is that we are the worst judges of our work, especially when it's fresh and just get it out there just you know just won't interfere some competitions and literary journals have rules about what you can and can't submit but you know if you put it on your social media and you took it down um just in order to submit it i don't think anybody is ever even probably going to notice i wouldn't worry too much about those kinds of, of rules and regulations they're really more about competing competitions or competing journals they're not really too worried about what the poet is doing in their own space. I wanted to ask you about the um, social media responses that you got. Um, I'm just curious, who are you listening more to? The um, poet friends that you are editing together with that you already talked about that's how you are editing your own volumes and uh, and uh, or the people who are who you are speaking with online so i'm probably assuming there are some uh, followers who are more active on uh, on your social media so what would you say who are you listening to more or in what way are you listening to these uh, different um, uh, replies or responses to your poetry? Brilliant question. Yeah, um, it's two different. It is two different mm -hmm. kinds of responses. So the first one is on fresh work that has been written literally that day um, and is going out on, you know, and then those respondees uh, the people responding there are followers they're readers in the main um who are just yeah following just following the instagram so um and i i don't know many of them i get to know them because they turn up again and again and as they make comments and so on you you kind of get to know people and it's really lovely it's it's incredibly i mean i i just never had that before and um, even as a self publisher in quite the same way because the, you know your own list is never as big as your social list and when you get a big range of people a bigger and i don't have a huge following by any means i'm very slowly building my following on instagram 
but it's it's thousands and so when when you have some thousands of people and they're not all responsive by any means but it's giving you a broad cross-section um, mm -hmm. and so you're getting more responses and they're responding really as readers do i like this do i not what did that mean maybe oh you, you know that touched me that didn't you know well done that kind of you know so pretty much not not at any sort of deep level though you get an occasional deep comment um, from usually a fellow poet. So there's some of them here, yeah. I can see in the audience this evening who are among those who will put something very thoughtful or say that was actually one of your best and here's why or that one really worked and or I loved that particular turn, you know, when it turned or turn a phrase or whatever. And, and that's all great. Where the sort of uh, writing group comes in, which I, yeah, for those who weren't here for that show, uh, it was when we were talking about editing. And I said that um, I wouldn't even dream ever of putting a fiction, you know, a novel or a nonfiction book out without an editor. But I haven't used an editor for my poetry, but I do use a group of trusted, fabulous writers. And there's a group of us and we kind of edit each other's work. So that's at a later stage. That's mm -hmm. the ones, not all of the, the poems that I put out on Instagram, I don't consider them all to be publishable. And indeed, I write poems that I don't consider even publishable on Instagram. So I, you know, I'm quite with I'm quite willing to put out a lot of stuff. Sometimes you're best not to put certain things out. You write it for yourself. And it's important to have that freedom, I think, as well. Sometimes you just need to write something out knowing that you, you're you not going to put this one out and it gives you just some, you, know, you might put it out later, you need to work on it more or something. Now is not the time to put it out there. But the ones that get taken from, the ones I've published, so the, the kind of the, the way in which it goes is get published on Instagram. Once a month, I do a poem exclusively for patrons and that tends to be a longer, more worked, um, you know, a more significant piece if you like generally speaking and then only some of pretty much all the patreon poems go into a collection but not for a long time because patrons get to read them exclusively for three months and then they go into little chat books and then they go into longer collections so there's kind of a series of process along the way and those other editors come in at the book publication stage so when i've self-edited the poem take them off instagram self-edited them myself to where I feel it's as good as I can get it then in a collection or a small chapbook they will go to my my poet pals who will then tell me what's what <laughs> <laughs> and they don't pull punches these ladies <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so that's how it tends to go Folks, if we have any questions, if anybody in the audience has any questions or any suggestions just before we we take, I've just realized I'm asking this now and I should have asked halfway through. Um, but before we we wrap up, if anybody has a pressing question that they would like um, answered, don't be shy. Please, please do ask if this is your opportunity. Um, you have put together um, a, a couple of interesting um um links and yeah. things for um this show do you want to just talk us through those a little bit yes yeah. so um both for the traditional way of uh featuring your poems and both for the kind of new way uh i would suggest a couple of things to to try out um, as I mentioned before poets and writers um the the, the literary magazine they actually have um, a database for contests uh, that you can check out and we'll put into the show notes um, the, the exact link. You can filter uh, the, the contest or the database by genre, so you can select poetry, uh, the entry fee, whether you need to uh, pay something to enter the competition or not, what's the deadline, so uh, you can really, really well um, select which are the contests that are interesting for you. So that's that's one thing that I definitely uh, would uh, encourage people to check out. Um, also, um, we didn't really talk about this, but uh, another that there's another new way to to get featured, which is featured in a podcast. Uh, 
So, yes. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that you can do, um, there are um, actually not that many podcasts that allow self-published poets to, to go out and uh, have an open mic, but there are some. Uh, one of them is Poetry Spoken Here. Uh, there is also a, a link that's uh, that I'm going to uh, put into the show notes. So that's something that you need to check out. Um, and um, yeah, another... I, yeah, sorry, uh, I found uh, podcastreview.org, which is a brilliant... Um, the website for for all kinds of podcasts but they actually had a very good list of um po of of poetry podcasts mm -hmm. um which i haven't checked them all out but they all sounded super interesting and um, so i think that that one is definitely worth um checking out and again these will be in the show notes and what we mean by the show notes is this video gets turned into a podcast and next friday week it will be released on the self-publishing advice <laughs> sorry on the self-publishing advice um center website which is selfpublishingadvice.org um if you look at the podcast page you'll see previous self-publishing poetry and um, podcasts that dama and i have done and it's the last friday second last friday of each month we do our or is it the last friday it's the last friday now yes last friday of the month we release our poetry podcast and so with the podcast will be a full transcript of everything that we've talked about today and also all the links that we have mentioned so um, you can get them and um, if you're signed up for the for our emails obviously you get a reminder and you get that sent to you so oh sorry yeah go ahead yes just one more thing um not to forget that um you put together quite a list of hashtags that you would suggest people to use. And I found it very, very, very important. So if you are a poet uh, on social media, uh, you need to start uh, uh, putting hashtags uh, whenever you feature your poem, because that's how you get traction on social media. So, and I think what you selected is a fantastic set of uh, hashtags. So that's something I also encourage people to, to do and select from. Okay, great. They are actually the ones that I use most often myself. Um, I left out some particular ones like Irish Boat and stuff like that that wouldn't mm -hmm. apply, but they, they're the ones that are, you know, they're all useful live um, hashtags that people do actually just go on and they just put in the hashtag and see what, poems have come up under those hashtags rather than you know that's how they find new poets so we asked for questions and we got a few in so i'm just going to quickly uh, we're um a little bit over time but having asked for questions we're definitely going to answer them and um, so james has two questions i'm going to put them together and take you at the end james if that's okay and diana actually has two questions as well so i'm going to go just straight into b first who has just one question is there a growing trend in audio to hear poets read their poetry i'm thinking of embedding audio into e pub three thoughts there's definitely a trend um, of, of people wanting to hear poets reading. And what do you think of audio embedded in the EPUB? Um, Dama, would you? Uh, Dama works for Publish Drive, which is the a fabulous distributor. So would you say do it that way or do it as an uh, audio book? I would rather suggest doing it as an audio book and uh, having a separate ebook, uh, both from production side and both from distribution side it's easier to start it that way. So that that's that's my suggestion. Oh yeah, I think I would agree. I don't know enough about it, but my, my instant kind of thought is that somebody who's searching for audio wouldn't necessarily even know that they would find it there. And that would be, you'd be kind of working against that. So um, also B, um, I know you're a good businesswoman and, you know, a separate ebook and a separate audiobook commercially makes sense. And then you could bring the two together and sell it as a bundle, you know, so that people are clear that they're getting the, either the format that they prefer to read or or both of them. Exactly. Together. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Great. So um Diana said we're um sorry, I just hopped there with a new comment. 
Uh, once you publish one of your poems online, I assume you're no longer able to sit, submit them to literary magazines as, as they've already appeared online are no longer fresh. Is this correct? Uh, you know, strictly speaking, yes. In practice, almost nobody does that because when you put something online, yes, it's out there, but such is the rate at which all of this moves that the number of people who've actually seen that poem is not going to be a huge number. So I would recommend if you're going to enter it into a competition and, and in the in the rules and regs, it says, you know, it's not supposed to appear before, I take it down, take it down and then submit it. So um, you're not breaking the rule and regulation, but really for the number of people, unless you've got a huge following and they're avidly waiting for your next poem to come out, which most of us are not in that situation yet um so unless that's your situation i wouldn't worry about it and um, because the number of people who have seen it they're likely to be different people and um, to people who are reading the literary magazines and not to you know there's no real clash there diana's uh, do you have an, anything to add to, to that donna or would you agree yeah i, I agree 100 percent. yeah okay it seems we're living, uh, Diana's second part of Diana's question, it seems we're living in a time where most poets are sharing their work freely without compensation. Is that where we're at? So I need, we did we did a bit about this in a previous show, Diana, um, where we spoke about how it works. So it, it isn't that it's without compensation, it's using free strategically. So it's not giving everything away all willy nilly, but it is understanding from the reader's perspective. If they don't know you um, and they don't know what they're getting, it's like you, you know, would you would you purchase something if you didn't know what you were actually buying? Um, and the answer for most people is no, you might take the occasional leap. But certainly for you as a poet, that's not the best way for you to get your work read or to make a sale. Um, it doesn't really work to be withholding in this area. Now, I know that some poems take a heck of a lot of work and, and intense involvement and emotional connection and everything else, and that it can you can feel, look, I deserve to be paid for that. And yes, that is true, you do. But you're going to have to work out a way which incorporates gifting the work as well, or certainly that's how it seems to me. I don't know, again, if Dama has anything to add to that. I would say that um, basically you are providing a little bit of yourself first, uh, building up a brand. And when that brand is already built, uh, you as a poet, then a lot more reader uh, readers are going to pay for future works. So this, of course, it takes a lot of work, but it pays off in the end. Yeah. And it's it's the old kind of business adage of no like and trust. People buy from people or brands that they know and like and trust. That's when when people spend easily. And in fact, you don't even have to um, do anything salesy at all. They want to buy from you when they know and like and trust you. And so if you're freely gifting your work, they come to know and like and trust you. You gather in the people around you who like to read your particular work. They know what you stand for. They know what you do as a poet, because if they haven't heard of Diana Stephen before, then they have no idea what to expect. So I think if you listen back maybe to a few previous episodes as well, where we build on this and talk about this in more detail in the marketing show and, and a couple of others, um, it might begin to, to feel a little bit more um understandable and maybe and i mean you don't have to do it this way but certainly this is the way that is working and i haven't really seen you know being in the new environment within the new environment trying to do things the old way i haven't seen anybody you know do well that way so it's either i think really commit yourself to traditional and and there too it's the payment is nil um you know or tiny it's not worth talking about so there too you earn your spurs by giving your work away and put, putting it out there it's just you're you're asking somebody else to choose it and with the social media platforms you're choosing yourself um 
Okay, do poems really sell anymore? Kate Towered asks. So I want you, to Alma, who works in the um, dis book distribution area, to talk to Kate about <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. Um, what I'm basically, uh, what we talk about when we talk about the renaissance of poetry is that it it sells extremely well nowadays. Um, of course, uh, you need to have a bigger following, a lot of readers, but yes, uh, a lot more people are reading poetry than 10 years ago. There are a couple of different factors going into that. Um, one of them is that uh, social media and the particular platforms are really well built for this genre of writing because poets are... Um, shorter, uh, it can be easily shared, they are emotionally very impactful, so uh, when you're reading um, uh, poetry, then you are almost instantly getting some kind of feeling, so that's that's something that's really well uh, sold in the digital age, so yeah, I, I would say that poems sell well, yes, or can um, sell well. Yes, they can, it's by no means saying that every poet sells well, absolutely not. But without a doubt, poetry is selling like it has never sold um, in, in almost a century, actually. Po poetry has had a complete commercial and creative renaissance. So if you're interested in writing poetry, it's a very good time to be doing that. But it's not something you're going to make a whole load of money on. Um, you know, it's people, poetry is... I mean, you might, but what I'm saying is don't count on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> poetry is free of that to some degree, I think. That's mm -hmm. kind of what makes it poetry. You know, if if you want, if what you want is to sell books and, you know, make a living from your writing and do very well commercially and, and so on, I don't think you turn to poetry as your first thought, and I don't think you should. I think poetry, you know, we're looking at all sorts of different values embedded in, in poetry and yes of course you can um balance your passion and your profits as a, a publisher who will sell poetry books or as a writer who might have a patreon following or a donation button on your website or however you decide to monetize what you're doing um obviously selling books and so on but um, while you you have all that and you can balance those two things, you know, I don't think putting the profit out front makes a lot of sense for a poet. I think it's all if anything is going to go out front, it's probably the, the creative dimension. But there's no need for anything to go out front, because usually when you're trying to balance those two together and what you the relationship you need to get into with your readers is very healthy and um, because you, you know, you're not just writing to market but neither are you writing in a, in a cut-off island bubble of your own. You're, it's communication and you're being forced to communicate. And, um, you know, people value things in our society by spending some money on them. And certainly, as a poet, you can. That can happen for you these days. So, um, Maria says... I treat Insta and then I'm coming to James and then we're 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 finished. Um Maria, I treat Insta as a sampler for my voice and sell my books through Amazon, but I have to advertise. They do sell, but it's slow. That's my experience. And I would say that's a fairly typical way of approaching it and a fairly typical um experience. I think for poets in particular, it might make sense to if you're advertising, if you're advertising on Amazon clearly that's you should sell your books on Amazon but if you're paying for Facebook advertising or book pub advertising or you know advertising somewhere else because of the nature of poetry unless you're interested in in the actual charting because of the, the and and the algorithm boost that that can give you you might want to think about bringing people to your own website to purchase there if if you're investing in the advertising rather than bringing them to Amazon it's a thought but if it's if it's slow building it on your own website, getting people's email addresses, building up a sustainable sort of group of people who love your work over time can, you know, for poets, using their own website as the hub can, can work well. 
Do you want to t speak to, before we speak to James, because it's more of a writing question, do you have anything to say about the distribution of poetry more widely um, beyond, obviously, our, our recommendation is to go wide, but any thoughts there? Um, yes. One of them is that, yes, I think everybody should be on Amazon, but there is uh, there are uh, subscription services and libraries uh, where you should put your poetry books up to um, because um, reader subscription services are for 18 to 35 year old uh, women most of the time as well as libraries are used most of the time by this age group and uh, poetry sells the best uh, in this age group. So that's that's one of the reasons why I would say that uh, people are uh, inclined to search for poetry in this particular um, uh, um, selection of distribution uh, services like Scribd, Bookmate, uh, Overdrive, uh, Biblioteca. These are uh, uh, library providers or reader subscription providers that you should check out. So there is a great merit uh, in this. And when we are in this um, COVID-19 situation, people are really, really using reading subscription and library services more and more. So that's that's one of the reasons why I would suggest you to try them out. Fantastic. And we're going to finish with James, who has quite an important question, I think, a very important question. I think we've all kind of asked ourselves as poets at some point. This might seem like a strange question. No, it doesn't. Um, but for me, I struggle to come to terms with why anyone would want to read what I have written. Maybe it's because I only write anything as a way of making sense for something for me in my own head. So, James, I, I would just encourage you to just put it out there and, and then you'll see, you know, um, the more you put out, the more you'll see. Because if you've needed to write a poem to work something out in your mind, it is likely that for somebody else, if they find it, um, there are people out there who will also get that benefit you'll have worked it out for them if you like and by reading your words you can give them this kind of mini epiphany whereby they resolve things for themselves and um, through your words and i think that's the gift of poetry so if you kind of don't worry about it uh, in terms of none of us likes putting our stuff out there um you know nobody who who is actually putting out their poetry doesn't have moments where they go oh my skin is crawling I wish I didn't put that out but you know um, I'm going to do it anyway and the more you do it the the easier it gets you get used to just putting it out not thinking about it moving on and then coming back feeling more dispassionate so it's it's a rhythm you get into you certainly don't ask yourself why you should do it or think about it in your front brain in your logical mind because logical minds and poetry just don't go together and um, it you're part of a much bigger thing as a poet you're part of a much deeper thing as a poet it's mysterious we don't really understand why we do this um but we're driven to do it and people are driven to read it and it's bigger than us and ours is not to question ours is just to do it and and put it out there and then do it again and put it out there again and not think too much about the process that's my take anyway <laughs> anything to add dama we've gone way over time <laughs> <laughs> No, I think um, just just what you said before, uh, I think people who like reading poetry are usually way more open than most readers, um, particularly um, empathic or uh, so I, I would say that um, be brave and put yourself out there. That's a great sentence to finish up on. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you, Dalma. Thanks, everybody, for coming along. Thanks for all the brilliant questions. That was really great. I think we'll build in a bit more time for Q&A in future so I don't go so far over time because Howard, our production person, is going to merge me now. He's going to have to cut, <laughs> cut this down <laughs> in some way. Um, so thank you, everybody. We'll be back next month where we're going to be talking, actually, um, to your point, uh, B, we're going to be talking about ebook and audiobook distribution. 
and the trends that are happening, particularly for poetry uh, around this time, of, you know, during lockdown and beyond lockdown, as the world begins to unlock what's going on with um, distribution and what's going on with book sales generally and how can you um, ride the wave, as it were. So till then, happy writing and happy publishing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.